All right. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so today I'm, we, I will talk about um, anomaly, detect uh, anomaly detection at farm drop. Yeah, but yeah, where is my, where is my computer? Huh? Yes, yes. So that will be a, bit, a little bit difficult. Um, first of all, who know about farm drop there? Oh. Sorry? Yes, yes. We basically we are everywhere in TFL right now. So check us out. Um, also, we have been kind of controversial about being banned on the ads for fat food. So yes. Um, basically, farm drop for those that doesn't know us. Um, we are an ethical grocer online. So basically, we source. Um, if you want potatoes, carrots, whatever you want, um, you go to our website. You buy it from us, and we will we will get it from the farmer directly. There is no middleman. There is nothing. Everything is fresh. It's in less than 44, 48 hours. Um, we are trying to get in less than 24 hours. Um, we are getting there, but yeah, we have no stocks, um, guarantees. Everything is fresh. Um, we are trying to cut everything uh, from the middleman and everything like that. Um, and we uh, currently have. Um, around 70, 70 to 75% um, going back to the farmer. So it's, it, I mean, it's, it's very good for them. Um, so about me, um, well, I am kind of leading the platform team at FarmDrop. So um, give me a, whatever you want to all the names. I mean, DevOps, platform, uh, it's the same. <laughs> I mean, when you're a startup, you are kind of everything. So. <laughs> Um, you have my Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and if you really want to, sm to spam me, um, please not. Uh, you have my farm <laughs> broken mail, please. Um, so what do we use? Uh, basically, uh, we are really invested in AWS. Um, I say that because I'm kind of like, uh, I don't really like to be locked in in cloud providers, but I feel like using Kubernetes, um, which apparently some kind of people doesn't like. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, we have no problem, so maybe I can have a look for you. I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so we are using COPS, um, and I feel like uh, it's pretty much cloud agnostic. So if we wanted to go to, cl uh, to Google Cloud or any other one, it should be at least easier than what the documentation say, or at least we, we should get there. Um, so I'm feeling pretty, pretty confident about Kubernetes. Um, we are heavily invested in Kubernetes since 1.5, 1 1.6. So we have kind of a lot of, we, we, we have still a, a legacy server 1.6. Uh, which we are kind of trying to get right up, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of difficult. Unfortunately, uh, when they said that they, you can upgrade easily, it's not true. Uh, definitely not, <laughs> at least on 1.6. Um, we are also using the standard one, which is for the monitoring stack, Prometheus, Grafana, Alert Manager, uh, which I'm, I'm just going to talk about it really quickly. I'm sure everyone uh, is always aware of it, or at least I've been uh, able to look at it. It's kind of a uh, good um, technology to have. Um, and we are using Slack and PagerDuty to get uh, for the monitoring um, alerts. So Prometheus, for those uh, that doesn't know, you should check out. Um, it's an open source monitoring uh, platform, which um, does kind of your alerting and get the metrics. Uh, so it's it's metric based and it's a time series um, database. And um, if you don't look at it, uh, it will get your space eating um, kind of easily. So don't make mistake and like me and really look at the space that uh, your metrics are getting. Uh, it's really important. Yeah, well, uh, it's uh, yeah uh, getting metric for the space it work it's working until. Uh, it's not uh, because in 10 seconds you have eaten everything, so you don't have any alerts. <laughs> um, again, uh, Grafana, 
it's what we are using for basically um, having some shiny uh, dashboard and saying to the senior management and everything, oh, look, um, this is how we are currently um, monitoring these things. And this is how uh, we can have some shiny graph and see, oh, this is where we forgot the app and everything went down. And you can clearly see there is a spike somewhere. So, uh, I mean, yes, uh, you, you can use Graphite, you can use InfluxDB or Prometheus again, which we use. Um, Alert Manager, which is a nice tool. Uh, it's pretty simple. I like that uh, when it's simple. Um, and it does the job. Uh, basically, it's integrated with, uh, it's integrated with um, um, Prometheus and it, it will take care of everything for you for the Latin things. So it will get metrics. You will be able to set up alerts based on those metrics. And then you will be able to set up um, any things like um, source party, like page or duty, or anything um, like, um, I think it's Genie Ops or anything like that, or even my, or even Slack or mail or anything like that. And bonus, you can silence those alerts if you don't really like them, uh, which we do. <laughs> so now for what you have been there for. Um, basically, we have a simple use case. Uh, we want to try to monitor one microservices or um, API or whatever you want an application. We want to raise an alert and we want to be able to quickly identify uh, what's going on and if there is some things to remediate before a new page or if it's too late or uh, what the service is um, to be able to, to remediate it. So, first of all, if you don't have any metrics or any, uh, <laughs> any monitoring, there's no page. So that's one simple way to do it. Uh, I mean, you can try. We, we, when I first came to FarmDrop, they did not have it. So it was pretty simple. It was like, oh, we don't care. Um, so again, I'm not getting into technical things, but this is kind of how you raise an alert or how you can create an alert for your service. Uh, this is a real one, by the way. Uh, well, it was um, before we modified it. Um, we have a microservices, which is a basket. Um, on our e-commerce website, which just under the basket. So when you go to a website, you want to add um, a project or anything like that. Well, it will be on the basket microservices. So it's kind of critical for us because if you have no basket, we have no revenue and then we are pretty much dead. Um, <laughs> so getting to try to get an alert, you can um, basically create a name and have an expression and then say, okay, um, let's get one simple one. If there is no basket, or at least if I don't get any, any ones that have, um, that add anything to the basket service for like um, 15 minutes, um, maybe there is an error, maybe there is something that we should look at. And maybe we only care about uh, looking at if it's uh, between uh, 6 a.m. and 23, uh, 23 p.m. Um, because again, on course things kind of, I mean, it, it costs a lot. So when you are a startup, you, you, you really want to differentiate between trying to get someone on call uh, for critical things or just if it's business. So you can do pretty, some pretty cool things, uh, differentiate uh, so some, um, alert based on if it's business hours um, and you, 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 you only want for three minutes or if it's out of business hours and then it's 15 minutes. So that's, that's basically one of them. And then if it's business hour, maybe you don't want to be page or you only want to have a Slack or anything like that. And instead of saying, okay, I want, um, I want, the bas I want an alert on when there is no one for 15 minutes. Maybe you want an alert before, so you can have, uh, whoa. <laughs> you, can have another, uh, you, you can have like um, a medication remediation. Uh, 
if you are sure that there is, for example, less than 20 clients on your basket services, maybe there is something going on. Uh, maybe it's not, it's not right. And again, um, you can specify some hours. Um, so that's, that's fine. That's, that's great. Um, and it, it, it can work well. Um, but basically what's, what's, what's going on is when you create those kind of alert system, it's hard coded and you don't really know what value you are doing. Um, is it, is, is putting zero in, um, for 20 minutes. Okay. Or is it 20 clients? Okay. So you, you basically are trying to ask your project manager or your tech team, what should I get? What, 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 what should I say? And basically they would just put a word and it will be most likely random, which is kind of bad. So we, um, we're on call today. I am. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's cool. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I'm on call today, so if you see me running, it's 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 normal. Um, so it, those kind of alerting are pretty basic and are simple. It's working fine one till one day, which is not so. Again, those alerting that I've showed was real alerting that we were doing. Um, they were fine for a couple of months until one day, which basically, um, yeah. One day it was not fine. Um, we were like, oh, there is no way that we will never get any client for 15 minutes anywhere in the time. But yeah, we did get one. Uh, and at 2 a.m. I got page and basically, the, yeah, there was no client for 15 minutes. Nothing, like nothing and there was nothing uh, wrong about it it's just that it happened that it was a long holiday in the weekend and we never saw that maybe sometimes there is some seasonalities and yeah you know what's worse than being get up at 2 a.m for nothing at the weekend <laughs> now getting up again 10 minutes later when you get up <laughs> again for exactly the same situation which you say okay it's 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 only one time it will never happen again so what you can do i, I mean you get up you yeah it's kind of it's 2 a.m it's a weekend there's nothing you can do you say okay fair enough how can we improve this one how can we ensure that i'm never going to be get up at 2 a.m with a really be sure that it's it's something important um so the truth setting up some outcoded uh result it's it's a bad idea it will work for small project or for really predictability um predictive predictable but um things but no don't do it uh, i've experienced it don't do it so um what can you do uh, um I'm aware so that we have some third party um, um, that can do the, the things for you, um, that I can have three or the dynamic and blah, blah, um, which, which is fine if you have money. Uh, as a startup, we don't have really money. Uh, we can't spend uh, 55 bucks per host uh, because of course they are per host based. And um, as most likely you are using a cluster or, or dynamic things. Uh, by the way, we are using between five, um, 100 and 150 hosts. So there was no way uh, that we would pay, spend 75 bucks for sometimes a host that would cost us less than 20 bucks per month because we're on spot instance. Um, so if this one is not available for us, maybe we should get an intern. Maybe we should try to get someone that does it or change it manually. Um, that's the thing that I've been trying to push, but nobody was keen to do that. Um, the next option is doing it ourselves. Um, of course, when I say ourselves, it's as a DevOps, we don't really want to do it ourselves. We want to automate it. So, fine. Uh, I think we will try to get 
our own anomaly detection, which is kind of hype. Um, and speaking of hype, um, I've been in the AWS submits uh, last week. And for those that have, have gone to the AWS submit, I think we have, you have got some kind of uh, thing. Like it was like machine learning, machine learning AI, or oh, this type. We are doing that everywhere. Uh, I think it was like if you live in 2019 and you're not doing that, you're shit. Um, yeah, I mean, and we all know what AI is. It's just a F and L. So yeah. So I don't have a PhD. I only have a master degree, but not kind of, and I suck at math, so <laughs> there was no way. So what can you do? Or can you try to learn about that one without having a PhD? Um, so I've been trying to look at it, to trying to kind of understand what's going on. Um, I've been made aware that there was some kind of models that you can try to get to basically replicates, um, which is um, some kind of um, your data and say, okay, you have a week and you want to replicate it. So instead of outcoded results, you have kind of your past data. So you can uh, try to forecast it. And this is, this is a real uh, <laughs> coefficient and everything, uh, which blew my mind um, for the four year. Um, fortunately, uh, you don't really have to do that. Uh, you don't really have to do that. At least I didn't. <laughs> People have already done it in Python. That's good. So this is <laughs> this is what what it, what it looked like. So basically, my first um, trial trial was to say, okay, maybe we just get all weekly um, data and forecast it. What well, forecast I, again? AI yeah, is like if and else, so you can pretty simple, uh, pretty simply do that and just get your data and try to um, copy and paste. So instead of having hard coded things, you at least know what you should expect on that day. Um, and this is what I've done. I've done um, a Python things which build um, a FOIA models and then goes uh, to an exporter and exports uh, the metrics. So this is, again, production data, so I should not show you that, so forget about it, but um, <laughs> can you see any kind of anomaly, uh, anomaly in this graph? Yeah? yeah? I mean, if I gave you that and you say yes, you go on my team, please, but <laughs> there is no way as for me, when, when I see it, it's kind of, yeah, it's, it fluctuates, but there is no, maybe one thing, but, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> No, so again, I, I've been trying to make the Fourier model on it, so, uh, just to replicate it exactly, and it it sh it should give me some things. Uh, unfortunately, as you can see, um, this one is the lower bound, this one is the upper bound, and this one is a kind of prediction. Uh, it, it's it's gibberish. Uh, if you can find something with that, you're wizard, uh, really. Um, so it. Turn out you can't really predict things with the four year because you have seasonality, you have holidays, you have marketing, you you can't really predict things easily. Um, so I had to find out something else. So four year is not the answer for me, or at least for farm drop. And I've been reading some things and I've been trying to find some things. I mean. It should have someone somewhere have already think about it, right? It's already like that that we have done in DevOps. Someone have done it, we copy paste, and it works. So <laughs> come on, it's it's true. Um, 
fortunately, uh, I found something in the internet, which is called Prophet. Um, does someone already know about it? Oh, we have, we have a connoisseur. That's good. So, Prophet to the rescue. So, Prophet is a thing, a thing made by Facebook. Who would have known? <laughs> which is a forecasting series data. And the good things with that besides, um, it's not a Fourier model, it's, it goes seasonability, weekly, daily, whatever you want. Uh, it does a coffee, it does a lot of things. You can make a uh, point of change. So if you, have, if you know that tomorrow you will have a big marketing campaign, you can say, okay, tomorrow, those data points that you have forecast, you need to add 20% at least because I know that we have a marketing or yesterday we have done a marketing, you need to change your forecast um, about that. Uh, this is those data points that you can. And it's, 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 very, it's very good. Um, so this is one of the forecasts. So in black and blue, you can see that this is a training models. Um, I've, I've only done 15 days, but the more data that you have, the more um, accurate it will be. Um, unfortunately, with Prometheus, uh, if you have more than 15 days, you are rich. Uh, so um, it's date <laughs> and number of clients. Sorry, it's so you have you have the date. Uh, it's daily. Well, it's by minutes, but it's really compressed, so you, you can't really see. And it's the number of clients. So you, you can't, can't, you can't see a, a week and then it kind of repeats. And this last bit is the forecast. It's what prophets think you will be doing for that particular day. And you can see that, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense. And you have, a, again, an upper bound and lower bound, which again, makes sense. Sorry? Yes, yes. So this is one of the things that you can configure in uh, in Prophet so because it, by default it doesn't expect that you can, uh, well, it expects that you can go to negative because it doesn't really care about your data. But you can say that I, you have uh, an upper bound and lower bound, which is zero for us because there is no way that you can go to negative. And usually you know, um, you know the, you, how much clients you can you can you can get? So you, you can always say, uh, as for us, it's it's 150, for example. So that's why there is uh, the dash line. So I said, yes, that's that's it. That's that's what that's what we need. So again, uh, it can do the trend. It can tell you what what does the seasonability uh, is doing for you, um, for uh, the yearly, for the weekly, or for the daily. Um, and again, don't mind the minus, it's, it's because I have not set it to be zero, but it should be upper. Um, but it's, it's really cool because sometimes you expect some things on your data. And again, this is client, but it could be CPU or traffic or anything. So it doesn't care about it. If it has a season, a season abilities or anything, it will find it out. Uh, you can help it, but it will, it, will, it will do the jobs. So again, same data. Um, let's try it out. And now we can kind of try to make something with it. Um, you can see that basically as detected that, yeah, everything should be pretty much like that with the trend um, based on the hours and on the day. And it should not really, it doesn't expect to be much more than uh, this one, which is, which is perfect because then you can see that this part, yeah, there is something happen. Some things that you can now clearly identify and say that, for example, if you have more or less than 10% on the lower bound for two minutes or for three minutes or whatever you want, there is some things to be to action. So some things that you would not have seen before with this one or would have say oh maybe there is something there or maybe there is something there uh, but clearly it's there so oops. so yeah we, we, with this one we can we can basically predict um, kind of accurately uh, again 
those lines have been drawn minute by minute. It doesn't know, it's not a replay or anything like that. It, it's real time. So, and you can, you can even, in Grafana, you can even say, show me the next few hours, um, just to be sure that it, 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 it will kind of fit. And you can action um, dynamically whatever you want and say, maybe we should just forget about it and never see it. Or maybe we should action same things. Maybe there is some things going on. And at that time, uh, we should uh, raise a ticket or raise um, a critical things to look at it. Maybe it will go, um, it will go down so soon. So it, it's, it's saved our life, I would say, because we have been able to detect some uh, spikes that we would not have. Like we, we have got basically with that one, we did get some malicious people that were trying to DDoS us. Uh, and being on Kubernetes, we have the autoscaler on, so we don't, well, usually you don't really care you, as much as there is traffic going on, you autoscale on, um, you pay. But again, this is working for downside, but this will be working for upside as well. If you have a plus 30 person and you don't have any marketing campaign or you don't have anything that makes sense, no holidays or nothing at all, there's something going on that you should see. So yeah, that's all for me. Um, of course, if you want to try it from drop, you have a 30 point off uh, <laughs> coupon. Um, if you want to check us out, um, yeah. Any question? Yeah. Hello. Yep. All right. Uh, hi. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, how long? Uh, how many data you need to have to actually detect a spike or something like this? Um, so basically, uh, as much data as you, as you need, uh, you, you can only say it, we, profit is really made about trying to detect a uh, change of, um, change of point and to try to detect the season abilities. So if you, if you only fit in, uh, one day of training, it will not be kind of accurate. If you fit in seven day, at least it will be able to try to understand. And the more data that you have, the more longer it will be, and it, it will be really accurate. Okay, uh, so rephrasing. Suppose that uh, on the 12.10, yeah. you start to have this uh, unexpected behavior. How yeah. long is to detect that? How long it takes to detect that? It's uh, basically 30 seconds by 30 seconds. So, uh, I mean, again, these, those lines are already forecasted. So it, it's not like it's minute by minute. If I wanted to see the three hours uh, after that, um, like right now, I, I would have already have that. In Grafana, it's much more simpler to just show how about how, but you, you can forecast it. So it's at the minute, okay. at the real time. It, it's real, real time. That you can actually yeah, to, uh, I'm really trying to to yeah. understand. Uh, so the model is built uh, before yes. with the data before. It's not actually uh, rebuilt so based on what's going on and yeah. So every right now uh, we have found that every we, we are build, rebuilding the models every four hours um, just to get more data and more data. So we are more accurate as time goes on. Um, but yeah, we you can predict 48 hours or seven days uh, but we are only predicting uh, the next four hours um, because we found that this is the most accurate that might happen and it, it does fit uh, our current prediction so yeah excellent presentation by the way um my question is your your Decision to alert, is that based on the business metric or is that something that you've designed yourself? So like, is it the case that the business says that if there are less than 10 people on the website, we need to panic? So how do you decide that? <laughs> yeah, so it, again, it, it was kind of like that. It was like, okay, we have a project manager. He thinks there is no way we have nobody at 2 a.m. that will not shop with us. 
uh, for 10 minutes. Uh, we have found that it was working for a couple of months, uh, I would say. Uh, we have kind of forget those alerts, um, but we have found that as, as much as goes on, uh, we can't rely on it. Uh, we have to rely on dynamic uh, threats art that will be based on seasonabilities, marketing campaign. Uh, sometimes we have um, the BBC that will talk about us. We are not even aware of it. So we kind of have to react on it. Uh, Kubernetes is right on uh, the autoscaler, but sometimes it needs a little bit of help. So I will get to that. <laughs> Any other questions maybe in the back? Oh, wow, right in front of me. Uh, so I guess this kind of forecasting and uh, automatically figuring out the right threshold will like only make sense if you apply to the right metric, right? So um, I'm, I'm just curious how, if, if you've explored, uh, like if you're using like SLOs and um, kind of how you, like, do you have any feeling how you would this apply how you would apply this to any metric that you correlate with user pain? Because, um, like, yeah, it's, it's it's always easy to measure and alert on, like, metrics that are easy to measure. Um, but like the really interesting ones are those that are a proxy for your user. So I'm I'm just curious what your thoughts and experiences um, are in that direction. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, that's true. That it's 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 really easy for like traffic, uh, user connection, or anything like that. But um, we have found that even for our application, there is some kind of behavior that your application will do, and it could it could be CPU times or memory or anything like that. Uh, and you can kind of predict because as time goes on, you can make some benchmark, you can make some road tests. Uh, for X, Y, Z time. And you, you can kind of try to predict them because this is how your application should be working. Does that make sense? Any other questions? I think it might be the same question, but <laughs> worded differently. Can you can you can you tie these metri metrics directly to people checking out from their baskets? So, you know, uh, nobody nobody paid or bought anything, and maybe you can link that to your payment processor being down or something like that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, we, we we kind of have some other metrics like that, uh, which uh, is like, oh, we have no payment for X Y Z, or we should expect at least this amount uh, per day, or this checking out per day. Uh, and this is a beautiful thing about profit is it, it doesn't really care about what's what the meaning of these metrics. It's only care about is it seasonability, is it something that you can kind of expect or kind of predict or forecast. Uh, of course sometimes it will uh, it, it we have found that it's it need a little bit of help. But again with profit you can you, you can say manually what's you should expect, and as much as you can uh, fine tune it, it, it will be able to find uh, some predictable uh, things. One more question. <laughs> There's somebody in the back that has a question. Ah, that's a good one. <laughs> so, ah. for the recording, how do you predict how, what you're going to sell? So, um, yes. <laughs> We, we 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 have we have some kind of forecasts. Uh, so for your yeah, <laughs> we have more. I would say we have a, a data science team uh, that is uh, ongoing on doing trying to get this one. Uh, this one was a project for the tech team, so data science team was not really involved. I I didn't want to. Yeah, we, we wanted to learn ourselves uh, to try to uh, have the ownership on it instead of trying to get uh, the big the big kind of big data and everything. Uh, but yeah, you, you can definitely use this for um, trying to forecast your next month's uh, um, revenue or anything like that. It's, it's exactly why. Uh, you, it's one of the things that Facebook is using anyway. So yeah. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, 
Give a round of applause to Anthony.